Thank you, Madam Secretary, for being with us. Thank you guys for being here to listen. Thank you. Um, let me start by just asking you to clear something up that I've been confused about since I heard from another Madam Secretary over the weekend. Do corporations create jobs? Yes. <laughs> the private sector creates jobs. And what is government's role? Our job is to set the conditions so the private sector can create jobs. And so what we're working on and what we're focused on are things like making sure there's good infrastructure in this country, making sure that there's a skilled workforce in this country, making sure that, uh, uh, that uh, there's uh, a good environment for investment. Now, is there a difference between the two parties on that score? You know, when she made her comment at the campaign rally, I'm sure you saw it over the weekend, um, you had immediately a reaction from people on the right saying, aha, she just moved to the left and said what President Obama said in 2012, you didn't build that, corporations don't create jobs. What, where does that come from and what is the difference between the two parties on that score? on the role of the private sector? Well, you know, uh, when I was confirmed in the Senate, both senators on both sides of the aisle have told me, you know, commerce is a bipartisan issue. So the way I look at it is, you know, our job at the Department of Commerce is to really focus on serving America's businesses and creating the conditions so that they can thrive and therefore they can create jobs. So there's not a huge, from where I stand, there's not a huge amount of difference. I mean, we know what we have to do. We know that we have to invest in infrastructure to support business. That's everything from broadband to roads to bridges to our internet. Uh, we if know we have to, and there's no difference between the two parties, why have not we done it? I don't know. That's a good question. Because to me, when I go and talk on the Hill, everybody's excited about the potential for what we can do. Trade. Trade agreements. You know, whether I'm in Portland, Oregon, talking to a bicycle manufacturer, or I'm in New York City talking to a large corporation, you know, all of them want trade agreements because everyone knows that their supply chains are now intertwined. And so that's another thing that we need to focus on. So these are the kinds of things that we have to do in government to create the conditions. Tax policy. Our corporate tax policy is not competitive globally. We need to address that. These are the kinds of things that should be happening. And, and I'm, you know, I'm an optimist that hopefully once we get behind election, get election season behind us, whenever that is, uh, then we can move forward and address these issues. But in the meantime, let's look at what we've accomplished. I mean, a lot has happened over, you know, and President Obama deserves a lot of credit for the kind of momentum that we're seeing in our economy. You've seen job creation, the longest streak of job creation ever in the history of the country. More jobs created in the United States than in Japan, Europe, and the OECD countries combined, or the, the developed countries combined. And so you see GDP up, you see manufacturing. We're having an extraordinary, for the first time in decades, we have not only creating manufacturing jobs, but manufacturing output is up. I mean, there's a lot going on that's really exciting in our economy. Is that why the American public is so happy right now? <laughs> well, I think one of the reasons that Ameri you know, what the work that needs to be done is around, you know, what are we doing about incomes? I think that's a big part of the frustration. Now, the good news is yesterday, Consumer confidence is at a seven-year high. So, you know, I think that attitudes are changing. But we have to address income, income disparity. It's a real problem. And it's also something at this point now where you're seeing unemployment down below 6%. It's time to really focus on, you know, uh, how do we address income disparity. And, um, you know, what's interesting to me on the minimum wage is, I've talked, you know, as, a, as Steve said, I've talked to 1,300 business leaders since I've been in this job. No one has said to me that they object to the minimum wage uh, proposal, a federal minimum wage. In fact, privately, a number of businesses leaders have said to me the problem they're facing is the fact that we have different policies state by state, and they would rather see a uniform policy. So um, you mentioned business says that to you privately. Uh, privately, business seems to agree with a lot of things the administration is talking about, but they don't seem to have any clout. 
Well, I think that uh, I think it's a question of clout with whom and when. But I think the most important thing is, is what I've talked to business leaders about is you need to talk to your employees. We live in a, a day and age where you know every person now is empowered, right? We have a phone and a Twitter account and an Instagram, etc. And so we have to speak to everyone, not just a business leader. But in my job, I speak to the business leaders and talk to them and talk to their employees. But also, frankly, that's who our customer is at the Department of Commerce, is the American business. So I'm focused on what do they need, what's the conditions they need to grow and create jobs in America. Now, you've mentioned that you're an optimist. I read the polls. It appears that you may be the only optimist in the entire country <laughs> at the moment. Well, um, I'm wondering, as you look at what the situation is in the country, how people are feeling, if you had a far-flung relative who was out of it in terms of contemporary U.S. politics and you were explaining to them why your party is about to get hammered in the election uh, in a week, how would you explain it? For me, it's hard to explain because when I look at, you know, I'm a, look, I'm a numbers person. Mm -hmm. As I've told the folks, you know, I've done more reading in this job, uh, you know, every day, you know, lots of reading, but I'm a numbers person. You know, if you look at, at the statistics, our economy is doing great. We've got 4.6% GDP growth. We're creating, you know, as I said, job growth, 55 months of consecutive job growth. But uh, I think it has to do with the fact, I think one of the challenges is what I said, we've got work to do on income disparity. And I think people want to see not only that they have a job, they want to have more confidence in the job that they've got, and they want to have confidence that their incomes are growing. And so that's something that where we need to focus. And, and you hear it, whether it's from Janet Yellen or the President of the United States. And so that's where we need, you know, some well, well, let me ask you about incomes, because I did a, a panel the other day uh, with Pat Cadell, who you all may remember. He was President Carter's pollster and strategist, and he was saying the reason the public is so unhappy is because the economic policies of both Democrats and Republicans have failed the country. And I wonder, from your perspective, if the underlying reality is that the reason they have failed is that the United States has now lost the commanding position it once had in the world economy after the Second World War, and we're now, and will be for as long as the eye can see, in competition with hundreds of millions of people in Asia and elsewhere whose living standards are lower than ours. And so why should anybody believe that we can raise the incomes of average people, which haven't gone up for 30 years or so. So John, I disagree with your fundamental premise. First of all, I don't think... Hit me. You know, I think I, this country is in a terrific position. A.T. Kearney would say, number one place in the world to invest. Uh, you know, we are... IMF just came out and said, you know, strongest economy in the world. So I think... Let me throw it back at you. Mm -hmm. How about all this negativity that you guys in the press are talking about? Let's talk about the good news as opposed to the bad news. Mm -hmm. Have you checked our approval ratings? <laughs> yeah. um, when you think about the last two years of the Obama presidency, which are uh, uh, looking forward, obviously there are a lot of things that you can do as Commerce Secretary that President Obama can do on his own authority with executive authority. But there's some things you need Congress for. Do you have a plan A if we have a Democratic Senate and a plan B if we have a Republican Senate? And what's the difference between the two? No, there's one plan, mm -hmm. and the plan is we, it, everybody knows what we have to do. I keep coming back to the same things. We have to invest in our infrastructure, right? We all know that we're, we have depreciation occurring in our infrastructure, and so we've got to make investments there. I mean, we're out looking to f figure out how can we bring more private sector money to the table, but at the same time, the public sector has to do its part in terms, and we can't do... It, you know, we can't do things for six months. You can't make the kind of investments that are necessary with six months of funding. You need to acknowledge that we should be investing in our country. We need to pass, you know, trade promotion authority, and, ult and, and I think we're close to getting TPP done. This is really important. Trade, free trade is really important. I was just got back from Japan and Korea, and you realize that if we can get TPP finished, which I have all the confidence in the world in our U.S. trade representative and the teams 
that include a number of members from the Department of Commerce in the negotiation that will get this done. That's 40 percent of the world's GDP where you're taking away non-tariff barriers, where you're taking away tariffs, where you're really creating a much greater level playing field for our companies, which ultimately translates into jobs here. And we have to realize, you know, these trade agreements, the United States, we're pretty much open for trade today. It's not like we have big tariffs in place in a lot of our sectors. The rest of the world, there's a lot of barriers to our companies. So these are really important agreements for us to get done, but they're also important for the rest of the world to get done. So infrastructure, trade, tax reform. We need to, you know, we want to make a, uh, the, we need to be competitive with the rest of the world. We also need to invest in innovation. Now wait, isn't this the point, when you say tax reform, which everybody in both parties has been saying for a couple of years, isn't this the point where everyone should not often realize that this is a great idea, but it's not actually going to happen anytime soon? Well, it takes leadership, right? And it means that we need leadership. We, you know, the president has called for corporate tax reform over the last several years, the, but he needs partners, right, to do that. So we need heads of the various committees that are, would take a leadership. He needs partners there to do, get that done. And, and I, think that, uh, I think that we have to do a good job of explaining to the average person what, how that translates into a benefit and job creation here in America. Or explaining to the National Association of Manufacturers why you're going to take away the domestic manufacturing credit in order to give a, uh, lower the tax rate for companies that don't have credits like that. Yeah, it's definitely, there are trade-offs and that's where, you, that's the kind of, uh, work that has to be done. But it's important to do in order to, you know, so that American businesses can be competitive globally. Let's also talk about innovation and investment in innovation. So the president has uh, called for a network of manufacturing hubs around the United States. We've done five of them so far, and there'll be eight in operation by the end of next year. We need to stay competitive. So further to your question or statement about our position is it's important that the United States stay on the cutting edge of innovation. So it, the manufacturing hubs, the federal government puts up not a huge, by mere mortal standards, you know, 50, 70 million dollars, that's significant taxpayer dollars. But in the context of what we're trying to accomplish, not huge dollars. That serves as a catalyst to bring together universities uh, uh, the private sector, the community colleges, the supply chain around innovative uh, technologies that we should be leading the world in. 3D printing, composite materials, lightweight materials, uh, 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 inter, uh, design, mm -hmm. uh, manu you know, um, internet design, photonics. These are areas we should be leading the world in and that's you know, that's a huge part of our GDP growth since 2009 and our employment growth has been in these areas where we're leading the world. So, and we have the capacity to do that. So this is another area we should be creating right. the opportunity. Our time is short, so I have to go on offense again. <laughs> and uh, I, I want to... I know you're a sports guy, so I'm ready for yeah. you. Uh, I remember a conversation with your friend Bill Daly when he was White House Chief of Staff a couple yeah. of years ago, and he said, well, we're doing a study and some people who think we ought to reorganize government, maybe the Commerce Department gets folded in the USTR and uh, government reform. And I guess my overall question is, uh, why should the Commerce Department exist? Because you see a big push among Republicans who say, that's crony capitalism, that's picking winners and losers. Well, do you know what the Commerce Department does? We give you your um, patent or yeah, your you trademark. Yeah, pick winners and losers. <laughs> no, we pick, give you a patent or a trademark. Mm -hmm. We run the census. We are the National Weather Service. We, protect, you know, we manage the economy of the coastlines of the country. We are the International Trade Administration, so we help companies who want to uh, uh, sell their goods overseas. We help them export, and we help companies that want to invest in the United States invest in the United States. Those are among, and we do economic statistics. So, so these to the are charge the charge of crony capitalism. You say what? I say we're a service organization and our customer is the business community and these are services that businesses need. <coughs> I go out and talk to, as I said, I've talked to 1,300 business leaders around the country. They want our services. They need the data that we put together in order to do what they do, which is ultimately create jobs. Last question before we get the hook. Uh, 
one of the byproducts of discontent over incomes not rising is Occupy Wall Street, movements of that kind, um, criticism of the one percent. And I wonder, you're a one percenter, I wonder how you react when you hear some of your fellow one percenters, and, and there are some who've said this uh, over and over over the last couple of years, that Obama hates business, he's hostile to, to successful people. Some have even said America is becoming like Nazi Germany with the, with the persecution of the top 1%. What do you say when you hear this? Well, first like of all, I think all of what you just said is crazy, right? The president, <laughs> I mean, this is, this is a great country, and it's still a country of opportunity. And the president is a terrific leader, and the president is, you know, the president works with, you know, his job is to work with all constituencies. And he works with the business guy. I mean, there are more business leaders in and out of the White House giving advice or working with people like me or throughout the administration than anyone ever talks about. And that's why, I, you know, we keep track at the Department of Commerce of the number of business leaders coming in and out. And that's just coming and seeing me. That's not talking about everybody throughout the he Department of Commerce. He doesn't hate people with money? No, that's crazy. He works with all kinds of constituents. And, and his job is to, is to lead and to try and find the best path forward for the country. And I think he's been doing a heck of a job in a very difficult circumstance where the rhetoric is very negative. Would you all join me in thanking Penny Pritzker? Thank you.